Hi my amazing pen friends. Today we're going to be swatching out all of my inks that I got in 2023. I did a previous video where I put together the index but today we're going to actually be doing all of the swatches. I've speeded these up just to make it a little bit nicer and there are about 42 I believe ink swatches so this will take a little bit of time. You might want to pause and go get yourself a drink or a snack or something of that nature. To do all these ink swatches what I'm doing is I have a pipette and I'm just putting a drop of ink down. I'm using a sandwich bag to kind of spread that ink out and then I'll use a pilot dip pen to write everything out. The dip pen is a medium nib. Our first ink here is called Tar Heel. It's by Colorverse. It's one of their special USA inks. They, I don't think they've done all the states yet, but this one is for North Carolina. It's a light blue kind of leaning towards a slight teal and it really matches the North Carolina, I think it's their football team that are the Tar Heels. One of the things I love most about this ink is the amount of shading I get with it. And as it dries, you can kind of see it in the swatch. So we're gonna do the swatching down and then I will do close-ups once the ink has dried so you can really see the full effect of the inks. Our next ink here is Troublemaker's Abalone. Now, Troublemaker is a smaller ink company out of the Philippines. They pride themselves on using raw materials that are safe for, for fountain pens to make their inks. So each one is a little bit different each batch they make. So there is that. This one is a blue ink with purple shading and you kind of get these pink moments in there as well as it dries. You'll see it's just a little bit more blue than the Tar Heel and a little bit darker I think. It's a really nice ink as well and you kind of get some green tones also in with it. So you really are getting, I think they did a really good job of kind of taking this inspiration from the abalone and putting it into an ink. So it's a really fun ink to use. Our next one is Sailor's Mono Fuji. Now I tried to put these all together, like the blues together and the purples together, and it kind of messed up here. I didn't realize when I grabbed this one that it was so purple. I thought it leaned a little bit more blue, but it's really a, a purple ink that has some blue toning to it. So you kind of see it in the shading. Um, what they say on their website is that it's an amethyst purple that shades different purples, um, dual shading ink with different colors. So that's where I see the more blue, I think. It was really fun to write with. And I don't know, I think this is a color I might eventually get a full bottle of because this is a purple that really appeals to me and I love the shading to it. And a lot of times it almost looks like the, like you have the purple and then the blue almost outlines everything. And it's, it's really pretty. Next, we have a Dipton ink from Sailor. Now, these are newer inks. They don't recommend them in fountain pens because of the amount of shimmer. So these are, they have like an iridescent shimmer. And it's, I think, their first endeavor into shimmering inks. And so they just are not sure. They don't want to clog up pens. So they are saying that. But it's a blue ink with like these purple undertones. It's almost the opposite for the base of the one above it. And then you have this, they say it's iridescent shimmer, but to me, maybe it's the colors that it's sparkling off of, but it, it almost looks teal in the sparkle. And the other thing that I found really interesting about this, so a lot of times with pens that have shimmer, you have to shake them up quite a bit to get that shimmer equally distributed throughout. But when I did the writing sample, the shimmer was pretty equal. So here are the dried versions and you can really see some of that color changing qualities. And there's that iridescent shimmer down there on the Dipton one. It is so, so pretty. I, I really want to put it in a pen, but <laughs> yeah, I just don't know how it would work. So here I was just showing you any bleed through. This is Tomo River paper. And so it is rather thin. 
so I don't have any contamination between one page and the next. I am only doing my swatching on one side of the paper. I could also do like skipping sheets, but this appealed to me more. Our next color here is Robert Oyster's Oster's. Osters. I think it's Osters. Summer Storm. This is a dusty purple with gray shading. I really like this color. It's it's like a, a gray with a little oomph. <laughs> it, it has some really nice shading and it really looks like a, a summer storm cloud on the horizon that's dark, but it's, and it's a little ominous, but it's not like it's kind of exciting too, you know? Our next color is a little bit more blue. It's Deatramentus Document Fog Gray. And I don't think of this one as a gray. It's more of a blue. It's kind of that deep. Um, they say it's a blue gray with permanent ink that's waterproof. It has light shading and a perfect balance of colors, blue and gray. And I think that's kind of accurate, although I think it leans a little bit more blue. It's really a fun color. And I like the fact that it's a document ink, meaning that it is waterproof. It's, it's going to hold the test of time so that if you're doing official paperwork or anything, you can really use this. And I think everyone needs a couple of those type of inks in their arsenal. Um, I am going to experiment a little bit more with this ink because of the the waterproofness. I want to see if I can put it down on a paper and then write on it with a different color or vice versa. I might have to use two document inks to do that, but I think it'll be really fun. Our next color is Lamy's Blue Black. Now this one leans just a little bit more blue than the Document Fog Gray. Um, I think this one's more of like what I would think of as a true blue, maybe a blue that you would see typically in like a rollerball pen or something of that nature. So it is a little standard, I would say, but it's a really nice performing ink. It's an ink that I would put in a pen if I'm not sure if it's writing well, because it's worked so well in every pen. It does have just a little bit of copper sheening. You'll see that down at the bottom as it dries, but I don't really see that when I was writing with it. I, I only saw it in the swatching. It does have very slight shading, but for the most part, it's pretty solid. Our next color is Diamine Shimmering Seas. Now this is part of their 2015 Shimmertastic inks that have an amazing amount of shimmer. And I love these inks. I don't think that this ink has any more shimmer than the Dipton ink. So I'm curious about that. But this is a really rich blue black that has a gold shimmer to it. And it is so incredibly beautiful. Sometimes in the light here, like that darker area that looks black is actually that gold shimmer. And as it dries here, you're going to see that. So here are your close ups. First, we're going to do any bleed through really only the summer storm, but it was put on pretty heavy. I feel like in that spot. So I don't know. But there you see the sheening for the Lamy, And I I just am amazed at the shimmer for shimmering seas. There you go. It is a little hard to show on camera, but it is amazingly beautiful. If you haven't noticed, I have a thing for blue ink. So we have quite a few here. We have another page of blues. Starting off with Ferris Wheel Press's Stroke of Midnight, the one color that I have been so drawn to that I've purchased two samples of it <laughs> without even realizing I did it. So this is a navy blue with low shading, low red sheen, and mixed gold and silver shimmer. At least that's what they say on the website. And it kind of ends up being a shimmer that is almost like a champagne gold because of the mix of the two colors. It writes pretty well. I actually have this in a pen right now and I'm really loving it. It just, it's a really nice dark blue so it shows up really well and it has just that little pop of sparkle to it um i do say that i think i have this in an extra fine right now 
and I think it would perform better in a fine or larger nib. But it's a really, really pretty ink. Next we have Diamine Stargazer, another ink that I have loaded up in a pen currently. And this one is a dark blue black with medium shading, monster red sheen, I don't know what that means, and blue shimmer. Um, and it was part of the ink vent for 2021. So when you write with this, it looks blue until you move the paper. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my goodness, it's red. <laughs> And I think it almost comes off as more red than blue sometimes when I'm writing with it because you really, maybe that's what the monster sheen is about, but it is really pretty. And it's like the half of the letters will be blue and half will be red. I, I really enjoy it. And although it's a sheening ink, it doesn't smear as badly as some of the ones that are going to be coming up like this one the Diamine Jack Frost, which is a color I am absolutely in love with. My only problem with it is that it smears like crazy. <laughs> but Jack Fry Frost is what they say a saturated medium blue, high shading, high pink sheen, and frosty blue shimmer. And it's part of the original Inkfant calendar. I absolutely adore this. It's the blue color is so vibrant and like pops off the page. And then you have this pink that just kind of outlines everything. And because of the pink and blue combining, you get these purple elements. It's an incredibly complex ink and it is gorgeous. I right now have it in an Estabrook with a fine nib and it is amazing in there and it writes so well. I absolutely adore it. Our next one, I haven't actually used this one yet. It's Robert Oster's Fire and Ice, which is a bright blue with slight green undertones, medium shading, and medium pink sheen. They say this is a turquoise. I totally agree with that. So it has more green in it, definitely, than the Jack Frost. These are very similar, I feel, in their qualities with the sheening and the shimmer and everything. It just... I don't know. It, it's a very nice ink and the sheen isn't overpowering where the Jack Frost can almost be overpowering at moments. And that base color is such a pretty color. So here are our bleed throughs. Let's see. Not too bad. Our two at the bottom kind of bled through, but otherwise, you know, you had some ghosting and stuff, but not too bad. And this is what I mean about that top one really looking more like a champagne color. And I think it's just a combination of the two glitters and then that stargazer. You can really see how much red is in there. Jack Frost is just beautiful. The way it writes is so fun. And Robert o Oster, I keep on wanting to say oyster. I don't know why. Anyhow, sorry guys. All right, I think that was the end of our blue blues. Now we're going to go into more like grays and greens. So our first one here is Troublemakers Petrore. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to say this. P-E-T-R-I-C-H-O-R. I'm really bad at sounding out names, so I'm really sorry guys. But this is like a gray purple ink. It's very similar to the abalone, just with more of a gray base instead of that blue base. And when I ordered this, this was off of a recommendation. I wish I'd had a sample of it because it writes so gray that, well, I think it's great to have a gray ink. I don't know that this is the right gray for me. So if you guys ever want a sample of this, feel free to touch me up and like hit me up on Instagram or something and I'm happy to send you guys a sample because I don't think I'm ever going to get through all of this. Our next one is Herban, Herban, however you say it, Verdigris. And this is a deep blue gray with low shading. It, it feels like a green gray to me and it's a really nice color. I like it a lot. I did get a little bit of like darker shading in the corner, but for the most part, when you actually write with it, it's pretty consistent and I didn't see any shading in it. I think this is a good overall ink. It performed really well. I don't have any smearing or anything with it. And it's just a nice solid color for any time of year. Now our next ink, 
is probably the ink that I've had the most um, coloring from, meaning like I always get it everywhere. I don't know how or why or yeah, what goes on, but this is um, from Wearingal and it's for whom the bowl for whom the bell tolls. It's off inspired by Hemingway's work. It's supposed to represent blood splatter and war, which is a little gruesome for me, but it's a teal hue with low shading and red sheen. It's a very pretty color and it makes, I thought of Christmas not knowing the other stuff associated with it. And I think it's a very good Christmas ink, but I, I don't know. It just smears and it gets everywhere. So I'm don't know that this is an ink that I would ever buy in a full bottle. Our last one here is the ink that inspired my Troublemaker endeavors, and it's Troublemaker's Butterfly Dream. It's an olive green with this like pinkish purple shading, and it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's stunning. The one thing I will say is it's a little bit harder to keep that um, shimmer kind of suspended. You kind of have to shake it up more than once. So just keep that in mind, but it is a really pretty color. It almost leans more purple looking at it on the paper right now. And I don't know. I really love it. I'm so happy. I got that one. I'm looking forward to using it come more springtime. Um, not too bad on the bleed through the troublemaker at the top did a little bit, but it was put on pretty heavy. So here are close-ups. You really see how much purple is in that top Troublemaker ink. The Vertigris is very blue to me, blue-green. And then the Wearing Gold with that sheening. I love the red to it. And I, I want to love this ink. It just, I don't know how it gets everywhere. <laughs> it just does. And there's the glitter in that Troublemaker Butterfly Dream. It's so pretty. It's going to be amazing when I get it in a pen and write with it because I haven't done that yet. I had planned on last summer, but I got sick. So this summer is the plan. Next, we're going to be continuing with our greens, starting off with Jack Herban, Emerald of Chivor, 1670. This is a deep teal with low shading, medium red sheen, and gold shimmer. It is such a pretty ink, and I've heard so many people talk about this ink and how much they love it. I think this was the ink that started off all the, the shimmering and shading type inks. It is a well-performing ink. Um, I just, I don't know, when you write with it, you get that green and then the red kind of outlines stuff again, and I really like that. And I like the base color a lot. It's, I almost liked it better when it was wet, but as it dries and gets a little darker, it's really pretty as well. I found it interesting that one of, um, like kind of how they came about the name was that, um, Jay Herban kept an emerald in his pocket, um, for good luck. And the purest emerald deposit in the world was in Chavor mines discovered in the 16th century and so they kind of combined the two of those which I thought was really interesting. Next we have another sailor dip pen ink which is called Mellow Forest and this color oh my goodness is it's it's perfect it just is. <laughs> it's green with silver shimmer but the green that it is is like this whimsical almost green it's a deep green with leans a little bit bluish green and then with the silver shimmer it makes me think of when you're going if you're in a pine forest and it's this really deep green and you have frost on or snow on the trees it makes me think of that type of thing it also made me think of tolkien and <laughs> the Hobbit in all of their adventures for some reason. And I just, I don't know. I love the thing. I think it's beautiful and amazing. Oh, this is me going, hey, yeah, I forgot to do some of my stuff for um, Emerald Chavor, which I feel like I'm pronouncing wrong. I'm so sorry, guys. Next, we have Private Reserve Infinity Pine Green. This is more of a just deep true green. 
Um, it has the extended cap off properties, meaning that it's supposed to be able to, like if you have your cap off, say you're doing lots of writing or whatever, um, that it won't dry out or you leave it on your desk. It's, I don't know how that works, but I do know that it performed really well when I had it in a pen for Christmas and I really like the color. It's just a solid green. And I, I don't know what else to say about it. It's just a really nice solid green ink. <laughs> There's not any shading or anything really to go with it. It's just green. Next, we have Diatrimentus Document Dark Green. This, so I love this color. It's a waterproof ink again, so I like that quality. But I don't have a lot of descriptive characteristics for it. It's like money green. It's what I think of when, like, you had an old dollar bill in your pocket for a while. It's like that green to me. And I don't know how else to describe it. It doesn't really have any shading or sheening or other properties. I do find it interesting that green inks were traditionally used for um, accounting purposes. So the fact that this one makes me think of money is just really interesting. Here are your close-ups. So you see a little bit of that red sheening on Emerald Chavor. And then there is all of that sparkle in the Mellow Forest. And the pine green is just, like I said, it's really a true deep green. And then you have your document, document dark green. Such pretty colors. Continuing on with our greens here, we're going to go with color versus brain, I think is what it's called. B-R-A-N-E. It feels wrong to say that, but it is such a pretty ink. I, all of my Colorverse inks perform really well and they're a Korean based company and I just think they're amazing. So this is an avocado green with green shimmer. The shimmer almost perfectly matches the color itself. And I debated between, they call it an avocado green or an olive green. It's a really nice kind of not in your face green. And I tend to lean more towards these as a whole. It also performed amazing in the pen that I had it in for the longest time. Next we have MV by Robert Oster. This is a, an ink that I got in, I think like a mix pack or something from Goulet pens. So it wasn't a color that I would traditionally have picked for myself. And at first I really kind of hated it, I'll be honest, <laughs> because it's so bright. It's a, a really bright green with a metallic green shimmer. So it almost pops off the page. It's like um, from the Wizard of Oz, like the Emerald City type green. And the shimmer in it is amazing. But it, it's almost a little too much. I don't know if I could take a whole page of it, but it'd be great for like headings or something. Next, we have Ferris Wheel Press Moss, Moss Park Green. They say this is a desaturated sage green with lots of shading, and I totally agree with this. I had this in a pen. I don't even remember what pen I had it in, honestly, but I really enjoyed it. It was a little light at times, um, especially when it first goes down, and then it darkens up and you're fine, but... If you need to really see what you're writing, sometimes it can be a little challenging. And not a lot of bleed, bleed through, maybe some with the um, MV there. <laughs> but these are really nice, like different greens, not your typical just green green. So if you're looking for something that's a little outside the box, I would say the Moss Park Green is probably my favorite on this page. And um, the brain is kind of my second. Next, we're diving into my purples. We're going to start off with my newest purple, which was sent to me when I got my pendulum little stand. And it is Pelican's Violet 4001. I don't have a lot to say about this ink. It is a true purple, I think. And it dries really quick. It's a German-made ink. And I know they've been around for forever. But I, I haven't really played around too much with this ink yet. It's 
it doesn't have any other big qualities that I really saw in it. And it's just a solid purple. <laughs> Makes me think of grape ape. <laughs> and if you're old enough to remember what that is, you know, <laughs> great for you. Next, we have Noodler's Purple. Now, these two shades are really, really similar to each other. I would say the Noodler's is just a hair lighter than the Pelican's Purple. Now, the biggest difference I found besides that between the two of these is that it's a deep purple and has a little bit of shading. You have a little bit of um, almost shimmer in it. I'm not really sure. I'm hoping it's not a transfer from one of the other inks that I use, but I see a little bit of a gold shimmer in my drying here. Next we have Diamine Purple Pizzazz. Now this is, this is the ink that I'm like, every time I, I read the name, I'm like, it's like genie purple. <laughs> but it's a, it's one of their Shimmertastic inks. So it has a lot of shimmer in it. It's a dark purple with gold sheen and gold shimmer. So it has both of those qualities in it. And I like the deep purple tones to it because it's much more mature almost <laughs> than the Noodler's Purple or the Pelican Violet in the undertone color. And then you have this gold shimmer that just kind of gets in your face. Now I will say with the amount of shimmer on this, it, I have put it in, I think one pen and it did not perform very well. So I need to find a better match for the ink in that regard, but it's a really beautiful ink. It, you kind of get this light purple in the middle of the letter and then the outlining and then the shimmer on top of it. It's so cool. Next we have Robert o o Oster's. <laughs> violet clouds. Now this one makes me think if you could bottle a unicorn, I think this is what it would end up looking like. It's this really light purple with silver shimmer and you have these pink tones that come out in it. And it's just really, it's almost magical in its quality. And it makes me think of thinking of clouds, right? Of like the clouds, when the light hits them just right at sunset and you get that tonal shift of the pink to the purple and it's so pretty. And I really think that that's what this embodies. Here are your close-ups. Bleed through a little bit with noodlers there, but not too bad. And here are your close-ups. So you can see there's not a whole lot to say about those top two inks. They're purple. And then you have the purple pizzazz. <laughs> I, I don't know of any purple genies, really. <laughs> but it's what it makes me think of. And then I, the violet clouds, I mean, I think I want to just explore more playing with that ink because you also have these little bits of like darker purple almost to blue in there. And it's so pretty. I think it would work really much in like paintings and that kind of thing. All right, moving on, we're going more into my pink type realm. First, we have Troublemakers Moon River. This is, again, they do a lot of stuff in grays. So this is a pale gray ink with high shading and it has greens and pinks in it. It almost looks like a, like a desaturated watermelon in places once it dries. It's very interesting. I will say that this gray is almost too light for me. It, I mean, I like the idea of the Troublemaker inks, but some of them are too light for me. So if you want to sample again, feel free to message me over on Instagram, leave me a message here and we'll connect and make sure that happens. I need to get some vials first, but you know, the, our next ink is actually a scented ink. It's my only scented ink. It's by Diatrimentus. It's called Blackberry. And it's this purple black with a berry scent. Now, usually scents bother me, but if it's a fruit or something of that nature, then it doesn't. So I really actually liked the scent of this. It wasn't overpowering. I think the ink performed well as, as a side. And then... The color itself is this really nice, deep, kind of dusky purple. And 
I know I put it with the pink. It's, <laughs> I thought it was pink, but it's definitely more of a dusky purple as I'm looking at it here on the sheet. I'm not so good at putting things in order when I'm just looking at them in the vials. Next, we have Ferris Wheel Press Lady Rose. This is a, they call it a desaturated brown pink with medium shading. I, I'm i not sure how I feel about this one. I, I like it in concept and I think it's a pretty color, but again, I think it might be too light for everyday writing for me. I think it'll be okay for specific little bits, but for longer writing, I'm not sure I'm going to like it. And it also seemed to be a little bit drier. I had to dip quite a bit when I was going through this. I think that was a thing with most of the Ferris Wheel Press inks, honestly, is that I just... I had to dip my pen much more frequently than some of the other inks. But it is an overall really nice color. And I might use it for background like splotches or something. Next we have Robert Oster's Rose Gold Antiqua. I, I kind of love this color. However, it is um, a challenge to get into a pen. Um, I've tried this one as well, and it has so much shimmer that it did give me some problems, and it was probably the pen I was trying to put it in, to be honest. But it's part of the Shake and Shimmer series. It's the Dusty Rose Pink with Copper Shimmer, and it is so pretty. The combination of the two really does embody that rose gold feel, and I, I kind of love it. <laughs> I just have to find the right pen for it. Um, I think at the time I tried to put it in a pilot fine nib and yeah, that did not go well. <laughs> so probably a medium nib at the very least. Here are your close-ups. This is what I was saying about the Moon River almost looking like a desaturated watermelon there at the top as you see the pink and then the green as well as the gray. And the Blackberry is pretty, it has some shading to it, but not too much. Ferris Hill Press is pretty consistent overall. And the Rose Gold Antiqua just shimmers like crazy there at the bottom. Next, we're going to be going on to my oranges and reds for the most part here. I don't have a lot of these inks. So we have Noodler's Southwest Sunset, which used to be called Apache Sunset. I'm not sure why they changed the name. Maybe it was a, uh, a PR thing, but it's a really bright medium orange with yellows and reds in it. So it really does look like a sunset to me. It's a really fun ink. I'm looking forward to using this one come fall because I think it's going to really embody the changing of the leaves here and just be really seasonally fun. But I think it also could work really well in the summer. And I love how it goes from that kind of lighter yellow to a red. And it's it's really pretty. Next, we have Private Reserve's Infinity Burgundy. Now, I thought this would be a a deeper red, maybe more of a brownish red, but it's really more of a true blood red to me. And it, it gets a little darker in the corners kind of thing, but really it's just a, a red red. And it's the type of red that you see like people circling things on papers and you see that big F <laughs> on the paper with. I think it's going to be great for Halloween. I might use it for Valentine's Day. I'm not sure. But I found it interesting that this ink and the next one, which is Diamine Red Dragon, are almost identical in color. Like if you put them down next to each other, I don't know that I could tell the difference. So Red Dragon is... They say it's a desaturated, but I don't think so. It's a dark red. Um, the one thing it does have that the um, Infinity Burgundy does not have is a little bit of gold sheening. And you'll see it just around the edges. It almost looks brown, kind of like dried blood, honestly. <laughs> so like I said, good for like Halloween. <laughs> Next, we have Diamine's Flamingo Pink. I, this came in a sample pack and I am really grateful for that. It is not a color I would 
ever in a million years pick. It's a vibrant, they call it summer pink. Um, it's supposed to have a pop of gold sheening. I didn't get any sheening when I sampled it, but this is a color that is totally not me. I, I know there are people out there that would love this color. If you are one of them, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to send you with this color because I want it to find a good home and it doesn't have a good home with me. <laughs> Just a little bleed through, not too much. And here are your dried close-ups. So you can really see that variation on color for the Southwest sunset. And it's just so, so pretty. And I don't know, can you guys see much difference in the infinity burgundy and the dragon red? I mean, I really can't. And the flamingo pink really is flamingo pink. <laughs> Next, we're gonna be driving, diving into my browns. And we're going to start that off with Dye Mine Winter Spice. You'll see there's a little sad face on the bottle. And that's because I've had some trouble getting this one to work as well in a pen. Um, it just seemed to not flow well. I don't know if it was because I needed to use some pen flush with it. Like before, because I was clogged up from a previous pen. I'm not really sure. I need to give it another go. But Winter Spice is what they say... Um, is a medium gingerbread brown with low green sheen and blue shimmer. So overall, I think it's a pretty color. I don't know if it's a me color. It's a very dark brown to me, and I'm not sure if I like the combination of the green and blue with the brown. It makes me almost think of like somebody being punched for some reason. I don't know. The Next we have Private Reserve's Chocolate which is just a really rich, dark brown. Um, I don't really have anything else to say about it, honestly. <laughs> it's just, um, it doesn't have, it's like a true brown to me. Like when you pick the brown crayon out of the crayon box, this is the color, <laughs> you know? But it performed really well. It's a nice ink. I think it's going to be a great ink again for fall because I think of browns and oranges and things like that for fall. Next we have Diamine's Chocolate Brown, which again, from the Private Reserve in the Diamine, it's almost like they, <laughs> they're duplicates of each other. And I didn't know that because they're so, so close in coloring. Like, I don't know that I could tell them apart. What they say is it's a deep red toned brown with black sheen. I do see a little bit of the sheening. Does Private Reserve have it too though? I almost think that it does. I, I think they look pretty well identical on the paper and you'll see that when we do their close-ups at the end. Both performed well. They're nice inks, but they're just brown. Next we have Noodler's Polar Brown, which is more of a medium brown. So maybe a little lighter. I, I like this one a little bit more, I think, in some ways than the other browns. It, I don't know, it just has more personality to me. <laughs> but it's a personal preference. I know lots of people really love the different browns and they're big on them. I think they're great for like sketching and that kind of thing. I, and I like having them in my arsenal. So as far as bleed through, not really much, um, maybe a little bit for winter spice, but other than that, you're good. And here are your close-ups. So you can't really see it there. There's the sheening and the shimmer for winter spice. And it's not overpowering. I just don't know if I like it. And Maybe chocolate brown is just a tad darker than chocolate, but I'm not sure. And then we have the Noodler's Polar Brown, which is much, much lighter at the bottom. On to our last page, we're going to start off with one of my favorite colors, which is the Diamine Cocoa Shimmer. This is another one of their Shimmertastic inks. It's a warm brown with low brown sheen and gold shimmer. I haven't put this in a regular pen, but I've used it for my weekly just off of a dip pen, and it is so amazing. This is a color I really want to get in a bottle. Uh, it's just, it's like the perfect brown. It 
It does lean a little bit more red, I think, than the other browns I've shown you. And with that gold shimmer, it just kind of pops off the page. It's so, so pretty. So probably my favorite brown that I own. <laughs> Not that I have a ton. Next, we're going to do Ferris Wheel Press Majestic Maple Syrup. This was a color I really wanted to get in the fall, but it was sold out everywhere. So I didn't get it until fall was pretty much over. So I haven't used it in a pen yet, but it is a, they call it a pastel brown with champagne shimmer. So it just, I don't know. It looks like maple syrup if you spilled it on a piece of paper. It really does. <laughs> But I like the shimmer. It really makes it pop off. A little worried about how light it is, but I want to play around with it in a pen first before I make that decision. But this is another color I may end up getting in a bottle because it's just so pretty. Plus the Ferris Wheel Press bottles are amazing. I mean, their design is so pretty. Next we have Diamine Gold Sands. Golden Sands? Golden Sands. Sorry. Sorry. And it's another one of the shimmer tastic inks. So this one is, they say a gold yellow with gold shimmer and it's this deeper yellow. So it, some of the really bright yellows, I hurt my eyes to look at and this one doesn't. And I also like how it almost has like this brownish quality to it that I don't know how else to explain, but it makes it much nicer to look at. Our last ink is Diamine Night Skies, which is another shimmer-tastic ink. It's black with silver shimmer. And honestly, when I'm looking at it, you almost get this, you know how you look at the night sky and you get those areas where it's lighter, almost gray, and then the darker areas, and then the shimmering quality of the stars. It kind of looks like that. I think it's a really nice black. Mm -hmm. I do need to get another black ink, but I love this one. Not a whole lot of bleed through there, maybe a little bit with Cocoa Shimmer, but when I used it in a dip pen, I didn't have any issues with that. And you can see how it just kind of literally shimmers on the page, all of these do. And the Majestic Maple Syrup is so pretty, but it is really light. All right, that's everything I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this little swatch book. And let me know what your favorite color was down below. Until next time, I'll see you guys real soon.